Welcome to the MIB Podcast, where we help you chase your dreams side by side. And now, your hosts, Mike and Talia Osborne. What's up? Hey, everybody. This is Mike and Talia. MIB podcast. MIB baby. <laughs> Hope everybody's having a great day. It's uh, a beautiful day here today. It's going to be almost fifty degrees here in Maine. Yeah. Woohoo! Almost scorching weather out there. I'm probably wear a tank top. <laughs> Some shorts. <laughs> it's been so rough out here lately, uh, but springtime's coming. Yes. Yeah. No thanks to that groundhog. <laughs> He's a liar. Dirty varmint. <laughs> Hope everybody's having a great day. This is episode number 15. What is today's episode, Talia? Married and failing forward. Married and failing forward. Uh, this is one of the uh, good ones. It's uh, inspired by uh, a book I liked. Uh, I love John Maxwell's book called Failing Forward. And it's going to be a lot about that. So before we get into that, um, let's do the daily talk. So guys, we hope that you are already following us on facebook.com slash MIB podcast. I hope you've checked out the website by now, which is the MIB podcast.com. We also have an email where you can reach out to us info at the MIB podcast.com. Also, if you would leave us a review on Stitcher, iTunes, Anchor, Podbean, any of the places that you can find us, we would love, love, love to hear what you think. We're super excited about continuing to uh, give you guys some good information. So yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying this, but if you never tell us, we won't know. So <laughs> make sure you go and leave a review, YouTube, uh, like how you said, Podbean, iTunes, uh, Anchor, uh, a lot of our stuff I think is coming from Anchor right now, which is, I guess it's a good app. I guess I'm glad I listened to Gary Vee. But um, yeah, I guess we'll, um, if you didn't hear our last episode or a couple episodes ago, uh, episode 13 was Married and Millionaire Stalking and Hacking, all about chasing mentors, being distant mentors with uh, millionaires that you uh, want what they have and mimicking what they do. So go check that out. Episode 13, as well as episode 14 was married and dream building, where it was a interview with me and Talia talking about what we really want. And this is made more for you guys to have a basis of talking to your significant other and um, grounds of here's questions to ask and things like that. Really learn about what each other really, really wants. Get to know your partner better. And you'll, it's a fact finding interview, that's for sure. So uh, we know everything about each other. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. But really, yeah, there's going to be, you'll learn a lot of new things you had no clue about your partner that I guarantee you didn't know. So it's going to be definitely worth listening to episode number 14. So uh, we'll get on with today's episode. And it's all about failing forward. All right. So, you know, sometimes things just don't go your way. You know, it's, everything's always doom and gloom. And, you know, it's really hard to stay focused on your goals when you hit a wall. How many of us have hit a wall in our business? Uh, it can be really difficult, right? But, you know, sometimes your marriage stinks. Sometimes your business stinks, right? Yeah. Sometimes your health is just garbage. Like some people that are talking on the microphone right now. Uh, so you just, you know, you're out of shape, you're out of, you know, overweight, you know, that, that screws you and that's failing, you know, maybe your attitude stinks. You're cynical about everything, everyone mental, uh, you know, just mentally bad, uh, mentally failing yourself, right. Have a bad attitude. And it doesn't help when you go on Facebook right now. I guarantee it's, no one's talking about all the happy stuff they do, all the, you know, whatever. Um, it's just news. Turn on the news right now. It's nothing is good is happening in the world according to them. Right. So it could easily bring you down listening to the, the noise really that's around you. Yeah. And, you know? and maybe you're failing spiritually, you know, you feel like you're never good enough for grace. You know, maybe you're not good enough. You feel like you're not good enough for God's forgiveness. Um, that's another form of failure. Yeah. Maybe you're not, uh, forgiving somebody that you really feel like you need to, you know, yeah. repairing relationships uh, that really mean something to you that tear you apart inside because you just don't forgive. Um, maybe you failed out of college or yeah. high school. <laughs> maybe exactly. Maybe you just didn't finish. Maybe it wasn't for you. And everybody look, you believe that everybody's looking at you and thinking down on you and that I'm never going to get a, the good, a good job. And without education, you're nothing. My parents said without good grades, 
you know, I'm a failure. I'll never amount to anything. Yeah. I mean, maybe you feel like you're failing as a parent. Your kid is, you know, you've done everything you know how to do and yet they're still messing up in school yet. They're still messing up in life and getting arrested and doing all these things. And you feel like that's all your fault. You know, one thing we need you to know is that failure isn't fatal unless it's final. Yeah. So what does that mean? So you just, you can't give up. You can't quit. You have to learn from your mistakes and make it better. You just have to focus on what you can actually focus on or what you can control and focus on those aspects of your life. Um, never believe what people say about you because all that matters is what you believe on the inside. And you have to mentally change the way you think to make sure you believe exactly what you say. I am a warrior. I'm a champion. I am a, you know, a, a kid of the king. I am an overcomer. And these are things that we all are if we believe we are, right? So, you know, I'm not trying to do a hoorah speech here, but really <laughs> you are much better than you probably realize. You know, uh, a lot of people out there, I, I follow a few different people and, you know, some people talk down on other people about, you know, you, look, everybody needs to be a millionaire and everybody needs to do, invest money in this and go into a bunch of debt buying real estate and this and that. And the truth is, I believe that it's not that cut and dry. You know, the truth is the average person's average because they refuse to step out of the shoes of the average person. You know, there's 2% of the world that control like all the wealth. Right. So it could be 50, 50 if 50% <laughs> of people wanted to. Right. Right. So, you know, I don't believe there's one way to become successful in anything in marriage or life or anything that's clear cut and dry, but it all starts with you actually believing in yourself and actually taking action and, and moving forward with that, knowing that, I have greatness in me. I have better things there for my life. Uh, this is not final. This is just a momentary lapse. This is not something that is going to control the rest of my life. Right? Yep. So, you know, there are so many, we talked about a bunch of things that you can or may have failed at, but we said failure isn't final. And what does that mean? That means that if you don't quit, if you pursue greatness in that area or you figure out a way to change everything you are not a failure you are not a failure you are not a failure i want to keep saying that because i want you to hear it you are not a failure yeah we're not trying to be a counselor here today like we said we just want people to know that you know it, it's okay to be down in the dumps it's okay to be hard on yourself for a minute um you don't want to but i mean truthfully as long as you don't stay there, you're fine. I remember somebody telling us years ago, we were in really financial trouble. <laughs> and I remember a guy saying, you know, we were like, literally, uh, we were so broke that we were trying to file bankruptcy, but we couldn't afford to file bankruptcy. <laughs> yes. That was how bad. We had two kids at the time. Things were just terrible. And, you know, I remember a guy saying up on a stage, we're at a conference and he goes, um, you know, bankruptcy is not final unless you keep yourself bankrupt. Right. It's basically, it's, you file bankruptcy, you move forward, and you fix everything. You learn from your mistakes. Right. Right. Exactly. And that was such powerful information because it's true. Bankruptcy doesn't define you. Divorce doesn't define you. Dropping out of college doesn't define who you are. It only adds to your story, more or less. No, yeah. there's not one good movie out there that is perfect all the way through. There's no pitfalls and obstacles and things that, you know, it wouldn't be a very good Avenger movie if they just went there and we were just practicing the whole time of fighting people and running drills and like, well, no one's here to battle. So, and you know, oh yeah, it's definitely a hundred, you know, billion dollar movie. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, and the, going back to what Mike said, you know, people like to put labels and titles on you. They want to say, Oh, that's, you know, that's Tony. He's a college dropout. No, you're not a college dropout. You dropped out of college, but you are not a college dropout. They say, Oh, that's Mary. She's a divorcee. No, you were divorced but now you're moving forward. So don't let people put those titles on you. That's another form of keeping you in the failure that you had experienced. Yeah. So I'll, I'll read a couple of good quotes from you. I really enjoyed uh, from Failing Forward. I've read this book hundreds of times in low time points of our life. And uh, it's by John Maxwell. If you want to go pick it up, uh, it's dirt cheap now. You probably still got a billion copies have been printed. But <laughs> when achievers fail, they see it as a momentary event, not a lifelong epidemic. Kind of what we talked about earlier. Just in that moment, you, yeah, you had a lapse of judgment. You failed. You messed up. 
uh, you didn't do the right thing. Or someone or else made a, made a mistake. Someone else made a mistake, blamed it on you. You had to take the blame. But that doesn't define who you are and what your future um, holds. You just have to work hard and just make sure that that doesn't, you know, end up being the last thing you ever do. If someone says you're not good enough to make the basketball team, Michael Jordan, you know, you're not, <laughs> you're not good <laughs> enough to play high school basketball. He said, no, I am. And I will, you know, Tiger Woods, he, they would say he would actually go out there every day and hit, I think, 500 shots off a tee and 500, well, all these different clubs and just practice every day, every day, every day. And that's when, why he became basically one of the greatest of all time. They said Kobe Bryant would actually go out into the field, uh, I'm sorry, out on the court and play basketball with no basketball, envisioning what he was going to do because he knew that he could control his destiny by knowing or basically playing the game in his mind and getting his mentally, you know, getting mentally sharp, iron sharp as iron. Sounds like crazy person, right? But yeah. no, he, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Not so. better than Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry. We're showing her age here, right? <laughs> but yeah, you know, that's, it's pretty powerful. Uh, another quote is uh, John Maxwell again is life is playing a poor hand. Well, the greatest battle you wage against failure occurs on the inside, not the outside. It's a battle for your mind, a battle of controlling who, well, who's in control, the media, your friends, your family. You have to push them out of the way sometimes. They're well-meaning. They love you. Uh, maybe they don't. Maybe they want you to fail, you know? A lot of times you, I hear it, you know, who was it? I'm, I, you know, if you go on Facebook right now and say, I got a new job, you know, you get 400 likes. Everybody's throwing you virtual high fives, emojis everywhere. Then all of a sudden you say, hey, I started a business. All of a sudden, three likes. You know, nothing, <laughs> no comments at all. And this has happened to us several times, which is fine. I don't I mean, we don't need the audience. We, we, it, proving other people wrong is better than, oh, better revenge than actually being bitter about it at the time. And they don't control anything. They don't pay your bills. So it doesn't exactly. matter. So playing your poor hand well, I mean, all the best poker players in the world, they don't, they just know how to play poker. They know how to play the game, the mental game, the mind game. They can't you, control the cards. Yeah, they can't control the cards that are played to them, but they can control how they react and how they play it, and how they bluff, you know, most hands are one because when they don't have anything at all to play. Yeah. And that's, it's pretty powerful if you think about it and react that way. Yeah. So, you know, another great success story that we wanted to talk about is Truett Cathy. Now, I don't know if you know this, he is the founder of Chick-fil-A. And, you know, he invented the chicken sandwich, which I absolutely love Chick-fil-A. I don't consider Chick-fil-A a fast food restaurant. I know it is, but I don't consider it one because the people never have an attitude. <laughs> they, my food order is almost always right. And when, if they ever make a mistake, they don't give me an attitude because they made a mistake. So the food's always hot. And the food's always hot and amazing. So I'm just yeah. saying, you know, plug for Chick-fil-A. I love you. <laughs> um, but either way, so he created the chicken sandwich and um, he started his 24 hour restaurant. He fought. Uh, it, oh no, it, oh, it caught on fire. Yeah, so the restaurant caught on fire, burned down. So that's, <laughs> that's a failure. That's, that's awesome, right? That's yeah. exactly what you want to wake up to, right? Your business, your successful business being literally burnt to the ground. Yeah, and this, that was something out of his control. Then after that, his, he got cancer. He fought it. He won. Yeah, he just died a couple of years ago, but yeah, yes. I mean, this was years ago he got cancer. Yes, and then. His two business partners were his brothers. Yep, and guess what happened to them? Plane crash. They literally died on a plane crash. And this was like when they were young, when the business was at its infancy, right? Yep. So uh, what about today? I mean, I guess there's no Chick-fil-A's anywhere. This guy quit. He said, screw it. You know, life's eat, too hard. Eat more burgers. Don't eat the chicken. You know, <laughs> no, yeah. 1800 Chick-fil-A's across the country uh, from a stat I found online. And today he's worth $4.3 billion of the company is. And this is for a guy that gives away 90% of his income. You know, that's what he said. He, uh, that's what they say he does. And uh, not too bad for companies not even open on Sundays. I know. It's freaking amazing. That, that's the worst thing, too, because every time you get out of church, Chick-fil-A sounds so <laughs> amazing, right? A candlelit Chick-fil-A dinner. And <laughs> yeah, you got to buy in bulk on Saturday. <laughs> how powerful is that, though? Never giving up, never quitting, just moving forward, taking something that you know is like a great idea or a great business or you just like the the sandwich and you know that everybody else will too and turning into a company that employs you know thousands of people is worth billions of dollars and uh, is a big philanthropy uh, philanthropy 
Floram- there you go. <laughs> Floranthropist. They give away a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, that kind over here. But yeah, I mean, pretty powerful, right? And, uh, and he I mean, didn't let any of those adversities of life stop him. Yeah, great stories, you know. Uh, how about Colonel Sanders? That was always a good story. So at 65, now 65 is generally the age that a lot of people start to think about retirement. He couldn't retire because he couldn't afford to live off social, uh, social security. Yeah. So he decided, well, I'm 65. This is a perfect time to try to get my chicken recipe out to the world. Now, you and I might think, man, I'd be on a beach somewhere. I'd be laid up in my bed, 65 years old. No, he said, I'm going to go out and I'm going to make this happen. But the only problem was that he failed a thousand and nine times before he had success. Yeah, no one bought his chicken recipe for 1,008 different times. In 1,009, he said, okay, yeah, shake my hand. I'll buy your chicken recipe. And then he made the slogan, finger looking good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, think about that. Really think about that. How many times have you been told no? Yeah. How many, th- how many times are you willing to go and pitch your idea, an idea that you feel is like the most powerful thing on earth, are you willing to pitch it 1,009 times and sit here? No, 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 no. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine? Yeah, that's rough. I remember the guy, uh, the guy that wrote chicken soup for the soul. He got turned down by hundreds of people before somebody finally bought it. And like, Oh my gosh, what he sold it. Millions of copies today. Yeah, uh, Rick, that's crazy. Rick Warren's book, uh, the purpose driven life. Same thing turned down several times before picked up by somebody. I mean, if you think, I mean, if you really believe in your idea, if you really believe, in what you're doing, and you have to stick with it. Don't let the first no be a failure. Let know that failure goes towards success. It takes failure to actually reach reach success. You know, if you quit trying to walk when you're a baby, every, first time you fell down, you know, what would be that? You know, have the, the determination of a baby when it comes to walking, right? Right. Or the determination of a weed that it will never go away, the tenacity of a weed. I've heard that before too. <laughs> Basically you pull weed out, it just comes back up and that's just what they do. Right. Yeah. And you can't be, just try to be unstoppable. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I want to ask you guys who taught you how to fail. And for a lot of us, the, the answer to that question is no one, you know, we, we grow up thinking we got to be successful. We can never fail all A's, you know, get that honor roll, you know, get the trophy, win first, second, or third. Don't be the fourth one because you're the loser, <laughs> right? So we are taught how to win and some of us can win gracefully and some of us don't win gracefully, but we are not necessarily taught how to fail. And so I think that this is one of the biggest failures of uh, maybe, I don't know, our generation or the generation before us, where we're not teaching our children how to fail. I actually saw a Facebook post from one of my friends um, talking about kids and failure and how we need to um, stop them from failing. And and my comment was, no, we need to teach them how to fail because in life, you're going to have failures, whether it's in relationships or in business or at your job or in school, you will have some sort of failure. And so if we teach people how to deal with the failure, that failure isn't final and that it's not the end of the world, then they can move forward being successful and not feeling so crappy about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right. Something we heard in the news recently, um, a while, it's been a while now, but kids that have, I think it was baseball, and they introduce it to soccer, and basically it's a game with no balls. It's you pretend that you're hitting the ball and you're catching the ball and you're throwing people out, and that's and, and you hit the ball and you say home run, and that way it doesn't hurt anybody's feelings. Oh my gosh! Lose. <laughs> or when you hit this, you kick a soccer ball and it goes in the net. You're like, oh yeah, goal! You know. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, you know, that is so, that's not real life. You have to, yeah, and, and when it comes to parenting, it's the hardest thing ever. You hate to see your kids unhappy, but literally, that's the whole point. I mean, could you imagine one day there would be a big lawsuit out there because somebody went to a job interview that they weren't qualified for, they didn't get it, they got their feelings hurt, and all of a sudden they're suing a big company for millions of dollars for, you know, whatever mental <laughs> illness or whatever. Mental distress. Yeah, mental distress. And uh, that's, how sick is that? You know? Yeah. I mean, I think we really need to teach our kids and teach ourselves that failure is a lesson. That's all failure is. It's a lesson. It's an opportunity for you to learn 
either what to do, what not to do, or who to stay away from. Yeah. And, and failure, I mean, it's just bad. I mean, obviously, it just makes you feel bad, right? It makes you stressed, tired, achy. It, it does so many tolls on your body. But doing something to better yourself, it releases the, what dopamine in your brain and the uh, endorphins. you know, endorphins in your body. It helps you be happy. It gives you an energy boost. It, it's adrenaline. It's intoxicating almost. Uh, trying to have success. So what you got to do is just try not to, uh, and I, I used to do this all the time. I never tried to end a day when I was in sales. I used to sell business to business. I never ended a day on a bad note. I tried to always end the day with a new appointment or a new sale or a new uh, client, whatever the case was, because that carried on to the next day. I had, I went off, you know, I ended on a high note, right? And that's what you want to always try to do, right? Don't end on the 15th field goal you missed. End on the 35-yard kick that you made, right? Yep. So, you know, we've had a few of our own failures. <laughs> yeah, we'll we, if you haven't heard our story, episodes two and three, there's quite a bunch of <laughs> failures in that one. And some of them we had no part and we didn't cause any problems and they still were failures. Yep. Right? It was all about the Amazon business. Uh in those episodes. So please go check them out. Uh, episodes two and three. Yep. But you know, we're just going to talk about a couple of failures that we had. And you know, one was our magazine. That now episode 10 was, we talked about that. How to build a magazine. Well, basically, yeah. How we did it and how we created it. Yep. But. So the, the magazine itself was a success, but the signing up for the franchise, that was a mistake on our yeah. part. That was where we failed. Okay. How much, I mean, we, we haven't had this magazine in five years. How, many people have really talked to you about this magazine still and it hadn't been in distribution for five years. Um, I, when was most recent? <laughs> I just got an email uh, like a week ago from someone asking me if I still had the magazine and they were interested in advertising, which never happens. <laughs> yeah, never happens. But so, the, you know, short story is we built a magazine from scratch. We bought a franchise, a part of a franchise and um, they, uh, we didn't, the terms were bad. They, we were a local magazine selling to local people, local business, local community. And they wanted us to use out of state printers. And then which means out of state shipping and shipping magazines is heavy. And that costs a lot of money and they got money off the printing. They got money off this. So basically it was a bad deal for us. And it was basically like bad business to do so because like, who are we to say do business local? We didn't. Right. right. We'd be hypocrites. And, you know, what was the mistake we made there is we should have read the final, uh, the fine print. We should have put that into aspects beforehand, never jumped into conclusions too quick and, you know, signing up. Because truthfully, the, I was already in sales. I was already number one in the region uh, for selling advertising. I didn't need their help on selling, which that was part of the program, right? Right. And the printing, I, it took two seconds for us to go to a local printer and, you know, tell them the weight of the paper and the color and the gloss, whatever. And we knew, oh, wow, we could save 500 bucks a month printing here, which makes our cost per page cheaper, which makes our profit potential higher, which makes the cost per entry lower because we don't have to charge as much for our clients to get in. Uh, what other mistakes do we make there that we should have not done? Um, that was basically it. I mean, that was really, that really became the downfall. The franchise came in later and, you know, after we had separated from them, we changed the name of our magazine, continued to print it. And, you know, we just, you know, they, they came back and they said, oh, this is against our terms. You can't have a magazine or we'll take you to court. So, you know, that was, again, if we had to read the fine print, we learned a lesson there. Always read the fine print, yeah. you know, always sleep on it. Make sure that it's actually something you want to do. Make sure you understand the terms of the agreements that you're signing up. Yeah, with. always know exactly what you're. Yeah, exactly. Be read that. You know the small print. Make sure that you know what you're getting into. Don't and, rush. I mean, same thing happened with our first house we bought. I I read this big fifty page HOA homeowners association book, and I said right away, "Hey, can't have a dog over fifteen pounds. I'm not interested." And Talia. Talk me, you know, no, we need to, don't worry about it. <laughs> I told her no. I, and I knew right away it was bad. And yeah, sure enough, we got locked in a, a deal that the, <laughs> would it drop in price like $50,000. It wasn't an expensive condo. And the same thing, something we learned from now that we'll, I'll never make that mistake again. Yep. You know, 
Listen to your gut feeling. Uh, MLM. Oh, yeah. We were a part of an MLM for, gosh. Six I, years? I'll say this. We learned more, everything we know, almost, we learned from failing in multi-level marketing. I yeah. mean, we almost, we want to write a book about it because everything that, and maybe once we become, you know, really successful, we will. Uh, but everything we learned, I think business-wise, we learned from failing in multi-level marketing. Yeah. So if you're in multi-level marketing, don't quit. I mean, if you're passionate about it, go for it. There are people who are successful in that. We just learned that it was not for us, but if you're in it, take every ounce of information that they give you because it can be applied in other areas of your life and it can be applied to a different business if that one does not work out for you. And that's what happened with us. We failed. We failed to build a team. We failed to sell products. We failed. <laughs> we failed, you know, in every area in that business, except for growing ourselves. That's where we succeeded. And so we were able to take a failure and use everything from that failure and turn it into success with other businesses and other ideas that we've had. Yeah. I mean, it really gets you, uh, I mean, you have to, especially like, and like Ty said, we don't, we're not condemning anybody. We want you to succeed in whatever you're great at. If that's your calling, trust me, it's a great business opportunity, uh, especially if you want to learn how to run a business, if you, if they treat it like that. And uh, mentoring, you never get better and more genuine mentors than that because they want you to succeed because they won't have success without you, right? Without the team building aspect. Or you'll learn how to sell. You a fantastic mm -hmm. way to learn how to sell. I literally, only background I had before, interviewing my, I literally interviewed well. That's why I got that job selling advertising. My <laughs> background is in electrical design work like AutoCAD and Katia, uh, 3D modeling. Um, yeah. So I literally interviewed my way into the job because I was such, you know, I was, I read at the time hundreds and thousands of books and went to tons of training skills and I shook hands with hundreds of people and I networked and they called it, you know, cold contact. I met people to talk to about business and things like that all the time all, when we're out and about. And so it made it a lot easier to say, hey, I have something really good for you that you want. I'm going to help you get new customers. You know, let's talk. I, I, everything I learned was from failing in multi-level marketing. So how much of a, everything we learned about business came from that, that's how you take a failure and turn it into a big success, right? Right. So focus on what you can control. There are things in life that are going to happen that maybe other people had control of or the weather had control of maybe there were something flooded and you know it ruined your business or you know your spouse did something that you can't control where you feel like now I'm failing because of them focus on what you can control where can you go next what steps can you take to move forward from where you are right now yeah in a, in a book called uh, think and grow rich by Napoleon Hill We've sold out at 1 trillion copies by now um, it said, every adversity, every failure, every heartache carries with it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. So basically, in every, every issue in your life, anything that falls apart, look for the bright side. Look for the opportunity. And I heard that some people see obstacles, some people see opportunity. And, you know, that's, that's what it is. You know, when me and Talia, same thing. We, got, we come up with business ideas all the time on different products we can uh, create and inventions and things like that. And half the stuff comes because we literally like, gosh, man, I stubbed my toe. Oh, we should build some steel toe uh, slippers. <laughs> you know, just something <laughs> funny like that. But it's true. I mean, all the big ideas out there were, were started probably by some need or some failure or whatever else, uh, some obstacle that was put in their way. So uh, it, that's really important. Just do not quit. Stay steady. Keep working and, you know, good and keep educating yourself. Uh, you know, build yourself up, build up your self-esteem, uh, do things that make you uncomfortable, yes. get out of your comfort zone. There's no comfort in the comfort zone, right? There's no expansion without actually expanding. <laughs> Stretching. <laughs> yeah. No growth without growing. So you have to actually go out there and do something and work. I remember who was it? Uh, it was a speaker from stage. She once said, uh, a woman, a really great woman said that these if different African tribes, uh, they would put these curses on other tribes if they hurt their feeling or, you know, did wrong to them, whatever. And they would literally say something like, uh, I hope you stay the same. May you forever stay the same. Yeah, may you forever stay the same. Right. Yeah. It's like the biggest curse anybody could ever try to put on you that you would never change, never grow. And especially if you're in a state of 
feeling like a failure. So we want to encourage you. We hope that this was encouraging and we want you to go out, take action, figure out where you need to go next. You know, I believe when one door closes, another one opens and it may not be where you think it is. So look all around, ask for help. There's no shame in that. And you know, your future is going to grow if you can move past your failure. Yeah. Seek wise counsel. That's one thing. Make sure that the person that you get help from, I mean, I always say, just go find somebody that you can relate to that you trust that's in a, that has gone through a similar situation and things like that, like AA groups. They have sponsors that have fought, you know, alcohol, uh, alcoholic uh, disease, whatever, or alcoholism. Addiction. Addiction. Uh, different things like that. They can help you, right? Follow, find somebody that you trust that can lead you in the right direction, right? So um, we just tell you guys, don't quit. Whatever you guys are doing, you are worth it. You are great. Just keep on pushing forward. Uh, take action on whatever you're, I mean, it's the business podcast and uh, life coaching podcast today, but um, <laughs> we want you to know that, you know, we, everybody is, we're all human. That's where that comes from. We're all human. We make mistakes. We have to learn from them. And we have to uh, make it better. We have to fix the problem. We have to move forward. So I hope today you guys learned something about failing forward and just think it's not about, this is about your future. It's not just the moment you're in. So don't dwell on the moment, dwell on where you're going, right? Yep. So guys, we're signing off. We just want to remind you, send us a great review on Stitcher, iTunes, Podbean, and Anchor. Send and some love. <laughs> what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. No more. <laughs> um, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash MIB podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Info at the MIB podcast.com. Thank you guys. We love you. Hope you had a, uh, have a great week this week. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on episode 16. Thank Hello. You.